I'm Chris and this is the BMAX S15. Now I did say that I was pretty much done with the Gemini Lake laptop, so this will be as a result a lot quicker this video. I'm just gonna recap, cover things, so I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail like I normally do. Now why people wanted me to review this, you can understand, the spec for the price. Okay, so this has the Gemini Lake Sauron N4100, eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It is in dual channel, which is great. A lot of them just had it in single, so slightly better performance there. However, as you see, that the thermals, well right now, aren't actually that good. So it gets up to about 93 degrees, probably needs a repaste there. It does have Intel's wireless AC9461. It's a one by one antenna setup, so it's pushing around. In my testing, about 300 megabits per second maximum speeds, unfortunately. So not really the fastest. So other spec includes uh, the 37 watt hour battery that all the other ones have is also in this. And that's gonna give you a battery life, as you can see for my estimates and runtime here, of about seven to eight hours. It's pretty much on par with the other one. So that is good there, okay? So for ports, we've got USB 3 ports, either side. We've got mini HDMI 2 out, up to 60 hertz, 4K. So that is good to have this for the price. Now let's get on to that. This was selling 200 US, okay? Very good price, but not anymore. A lot of people picked it up for that. And for that price, you are getting a fairly decent laptop, I feel. The screen is 1080p, the webcam is 480, it's very poor, and it doesn't have a good frame rate, about 15 frames per second. But the screen itself, the brightness is okay, it's not super bright, but it is matte anti-glare, so it's not a touch screen. But look at these massive bezels here. They are absolutely huge. Nothing like the press images, as you can see. Super misleading of BMAX to do this. This practice is really frowned upon by everyone, of course, because a lot of people will probably buy this when they unbox the thing, when they take a look at it and go, hey, this is not the laptop I paid for. It doesn't look at all like the images, so they've really got to stop that particular practice. So it is completely plastic to build, okay? It's about 22 millimeters the thickness. That's counting the rubber feet. Without it, it's about 18 millimeters. It weighs 1.8 kilos, so a little on the heavier side compared to the other Gemini Lake Tech I've been reviewing. And the screen hinge, look at this. Goes back about that far, which is normal, but it's very loose. I think it needs to be a little bit tighter because it is a bit of a heavier screen here. And you can hear this, hear that. Plastic flexing, creaking all the time, making it feel just a little bit cheap with a 100% plastic build that it does have. So the keyboard, it's okay to type on, all right? Bit of a rattle to it, and that to me makes it feel cheap, a little. And the power button location is okay, print screen is there. Now this particular laptop has a very big, large touchpad, and you'd think that that'll be pretty good to use, wouldn't it? No, think again with this one. This is the worst thing about this laptop here, is this touchpad, while it is big, it lacks sensitivity. Gestures often don't work. I've got to press really hard to get two fingers scrolling, for example. Finer movements, the cursor just jumps all over the place when you try and select something, for example, in paint, bad. But let's get on to the performance a little. So Geekbench score here you can see is around about 1,000 points less on the multi-core score. And that is due to some thermal throttlings. So 93 degrees is what it gets up to. Gaming will get even hotter resulting in very poor performance. Now, I won't go into a lot of detail here because there's just really a no point, I feel, with that. Uh, the pass mark score, okay. A little bit lower than expected, again, because of that thermal throttling. So with the SSD, you've only got about 86 gigabytes free, but you can upgrade it. You can see here that there's a little flap on the bottom. You open that up, the little hatch, and you can slot one in up to two terabytes. Overall, the BMAX X, S15 here, just cutting it short, is a very hard laptop to recommend for me because of the touchpad mostly. The cheaper plastic, all plastic build, feels like a step backwards. The bezels are a step backwards. I mean, the screen is okay. No type C, no power delivery charging. And battery life runtime up to eight hours. Yeah, that's okay, that's good. Pretty much like the others. It really comes down to price. If you have, for example, a son or daughter out there, you want to buy them a Windows 10 home laptop. We'll also run Linux perfectly fine, by the way. Linux, Linux Mint tested, no problems. Maybe that's something to get, because you know they won't have the power for them to play Fortnite 
if you're trying to keep them away from that. And you can't really game on this laptop at all. It's just light tasks, docs, web browsing, YouTube. That's really it with this kind of tech and especially this one here. Now the BIOS also, just to add, fully unlocked. So that is the S15 there. That has got quite a few cons, some big ones, and really, hmm, not recommended from me this one, sadly, unless you can get it for 200 US.